Welcome. In this video, I check out Tamron's 50 to 400 f 4.5 to 6.3 from a filmmaker's perspective. It's a strange focal range of sort of standard to fairly long telephoto, and immediately I had so many questions I wanted answering about this lens. The first and most pressing is, is this good for filmmaking? If so, what kind? Is it a lens that you can hold, handhold? or does it need to be on a tripod? Can it replace other more common focal range lenses? Is it good value for money? Well, let's find out and I'll give you my opinion in just a bit, but if you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about filmmaking and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already, it means a lot to me, it helps the channel grow. I've also timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want down there. And these videos are also not brought to you by any kind of company or anything like that or sponsor, except for maybe my Patreon. The way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear, review it and then give it away to some of my backers. If that's of interest, it's inexpensive. Um, just check the details, they're all down below. So what is this lens? Well, first up, this is not a super zoom. Uh, I mean, well, it is because it's eight times zoom. But I think often the term super zoom suggests that, that you know, it's a company trying to give you the maximum focal range for the lowest price possible at the expense of quality. That's certainly not the case with this 50 to 400, as you'll see coming up. Of course, we have a variable aperture from f4.5 at 50 millimeters to f6.3 at 400, which is to be expected. Otherwise, it would be colossal and it would weigh more than a wedge of dark matter. I know a lot of guys that would actually prefer to keep this lens at the smaller of its minimum apertures, so in this case f6.3, keep it at that all the time and then you can zoom in and out and it won't affect your exposure. It has built-in VC or vibration compensation, which to stills guys means, you know, five stops of extra stability, you know, you can slow your shutter by five stops, which to us video guys means next to nothing. So how does that translate to videography? Well, it works in combination with Sony's sensor stabilization and there are two modes. I could be wrong, but to me, mode one definitely feels like it's designed more with video in mind, as the movement you can get is definitely more smooth. Mode two feels like it's designed more for stills, as it's that slightly more jerky style where it's trying to keep the frame locked in place. This lens has the VXD focus motor, which is Tamron's best, and that's another clue by the way that this is not an entry level lens. I first encountered this VXD motor when I reviewed the 28 to 75 from Tamron and I was really impressed then. And so I've got really high hopes for this one. It's quiet and just smooth. You know, it, when it shifts from one point to the next, it's, there's no kind of um, pulsing. It's just really nice. Next onto build quality. And I'd say the 50 to 400 is on par with the Tamron 20 to 40 F 2.8 that I reviewed recently. Quite a bit of plastic, but really pretty good solid and weather sealed. Optically, it has 24 elements in 18 groups, so predictably it's a fairly complex design. I mean, it kind of needs to be with that range. It's a reasonably heavy thing at 1.115 kilos, and um, it's fairly long at 18 centimeters. And with the barrel extended, it becomes about 80% longer at 33 centimeters. But it's all relative, isn't it? And this is actually small for a lens with this focal and aperture range. Moving on now to the user experience side of things, and it's really a pleasure to use. The focus and zoom rings feel smooth, but it does get a little unwieldy when hand-holding when you have it fully extended. Yeah, I know, the jokes write themselves. I'm not gonna go there, but if you want to, in the comments. Um, if, it makes, if it makes me laugh, I'll, I'll, pin it, I'll pin your comment to the top. It's worth noting that there's no tripod mount included, and I dare say it's on the verge of needing one. However, Tamron make one as an optional extra, and it's over a hundred pounds. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. I like that this lens can replace a 70 to 200, for me, anyway. And I know that will enrage some of you beyond belief, but hear me out. So longer focal lengths with smaller apertures bothers me less because, you know, here's the thing, you're gonna be shooting likely outdoors with plenty of light. And so that's not a problem. Or in a situation where 
you have lighting and you're able to control the amount of light getting into your camera. So plenty of light, but regardless of aperture, you're gonna get plenty of compression and background blur, subject separation, call it what you will. And you may even find that when using this lens, you opt to stop down a little bit more, just to get a little more depth of field. You know, I went out and I, I shot some footage with, with this lens and honestly, my favorite clips that I got from that day were the ones where I stopped down more. But tell you what, I should just show you, shouldn't I? I went out and I tried to find, you know, I went out looking for somewhere with a view and found it. And um, let's just say I have a new appreciation on top of the huge appreciation I already had for wildlife photographers and videographers. Roll it. Next, taking a look at focus breathing performance, and this is with the lens stopped all the way down. I'm at 50 millimeters, and when I move the focus point from closest to infinity, you can see it's really rather good. Our angle isn't changing much at all, so that's a really good thing. And just on a side note, I also couldn't notice anything in the way of distortion on this lens, so that's really good news as well. And then taking a look at all the way to 400 millimeters, and same story, it is difficult as hell because it's such a long focal length. Even with the lens stopped all the way down, this is pretty damn good. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the VXD focus motor and the way this thing focuses is just beautiful. This again is at 400 millimeters, just to see you know, how it would move all of that glass at its longest focal length. And there's no kind of pulsing or anything. It's just beautiful. I often get questions in the comments uh, when I do lens reviews about the noise and I couldn't hear anything. So, you know, consider it a silent focusing lens. Moving on to value for money and alternatives. And there are plenty of telephoto lenses to choose from, good value ones too. I'm going to exclude the ones which are around the kind of 150 to 500 amount uh, range because to me they are they sit in a slightly different category of doing only telephoto whereas these lenses that I've chosen have they go from kind of you know the the long end of standard into all the way into telephoto that's the kind of lens I'm looking at so the obvious competition for this is actually made by Tamron. They do a 70 to 300 f 4.5 to 6.3. And whilst it's smaller, lighter and cost less, it's definitely not as versatile with a shorter zoom range. Plus I suspect it's aimed more as a first telephoto lens. And then we have the Sigma 60 to 600 f 4.5 to 6.3. What a Goliath. This has way more range, obviously, a significantly higher price, quite rightly, and it's double the weight and huge. So I would definitely rather use this Tamron than the aforementioned Duo that I mentioned. But if you know of any others that are kind of within this range, definitely let me know. I'm into checking out more of this style. Anyway, now moving on to my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros, and this is a great focal range, so versatile. The build quality is as good as I've come to expect from Tamron's latest batch of lenses. The vibration compensation, I didn't expect to like this because 
I've just become very accustomed to just using the inbuilt IBIS in Sony cameras and being happy with that, but this works well. The VXD focus motor is excellent. Smooth, silent, it's their best motor and you can tell. You saw it, the focus breathing was really pretty nicely controlled. And believe it or not, this is relatively compact considering the focal range. I mean, it's smaller than a lot of 70-200 to f2.8s. Well, except for when the barrel's extended, of course. And onto the cons, and from around 50 to 100 millimeters, you'll likely pine for slightly wider apertures than this lens can offer, as there's less compression, and the subject separation is just not as great. It's a variable aperture, I get it. It's necessary to keep the size and weight down. It's a fine balance, I understand. I would say a tripod is essential when shooting longer than around 100 millimeters. No hand holding at 400 millimeters. <laughs> And you all knew it was coming. The tripod collar, not included. Come on, Tamron, bang it in. Finally, to my opinion, and I don't want people to go around calling this a super zoom, it, it just suggests entry level, low quality, cheap, and it's none of those things. I don't know why I'm feeling defensive about this. It's just, uh, it's a really well-made lens, okay? It's very capable. You'll love the range, and I've had some really good uh, images from it, so, I don't know, I don't know what the, what's not to like. If I'm to nitpick, I would say, I wonder whether it was necessary having this lens start at the wide end at 50 millimeters. It's just a focal range where almost every guy that I know who shoots full frame, they, they've got, a, they've got a prime, they've got, a, you know, a 50 millimeter prime with a, definitely a much wider aperture than f4.5. So I feel like people have got that covered. Uh, and I know it's handy having, being able to go quickly from 400 to 50, but um, just a thought. Starting from maybe 70 to 100, I think would have made more sense. And then Tamron could have focused on improving uh, the weight, the size, the price, maybe even the aperture you know, pick pick one and improve that. Ah, I had questions, didn't I? I had questions from the beginning of the video. I'll run through them now. Um, is it good for filmmaking? Yes, tripod, of course, is necessary, but it's nice to use for sure. Can it be hand handheld for video or is a tripod a must? Uh, I've just, I've just answered that, never mind. Can it replace other more common focal range lenses? For me, yeah. This, for me, this is the kind of lens that will replace a 70-200. I know, I know it's not f2.8, I get it. But I just find that once you get to those longer focal lengths, there's enough compression, there's enough uh, subject separation, and, you know, and yet yeah, with my experience, I found I wanted to stop down on this lens. So yes is the answer. Is it good value for money? Um, it's it's priced in between somewhere in between the lenses that I mentioned before. So uh, so I would say personally, I would say this is correctly priced. It's priced as it should be. And <laughs> isn't that the most just English ending to a video? You know, on English films where um, the ending's just a bit awkward and nothing really happens. Everyone's a bit like. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I made myself laugh anyway. I want to hear from you. Uh, do you agree? What did I miss? Let me know uh, in the comment section. I'll be down there as much as I possibly can be. I've now made over 300 of these videos and um, this top one was chosen by the algorithm. So do what you're told. Click on that one to watch next and um, the one below is my most recent upload. And uh, until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you.